Today, my beloved, as we all know, is the sixth Sunday during our Pentecost season. And as we all know, that Jesus, after the resurrection, spent 40 days with the disciples, talking to them, teaching them about the Father, about uh, the establishment of the church, about how to go and preach Christianity. And on the 40th day, he took them to the mountain and started to ascend in front of them. And the Bible said that while he was blessing them, he ascended. Uh, some people might ask, why did Jesus go back? Today he said that I came from the Father and I'm going back to the Father. The disciples were really disappointed at the beginning. So he told them, it is better for you that I go so I can send you the Holy Spirit. Sometimes, my beloved, we come across a figurative speech from Christ to teach us a lesson. Sometimes he talks to us plainly. But there is one very important dogmatic criteria uh, a base for our like foundation of our faith that we believe in one God and that God is Trinity. Jesus came from the Father going back to the Father and he is sending the Holy Spirit. So we see now the Trinity so clear. I know that most of you don't like the theological talks but sometimes we need to have a bit of theology so that we can understand our faith. I, wanna today to, I want to talk to you today about the concept of the Trinity according to the Orthodox faith. Firstly, I want you to learn that we don't believe in three gods. We believe in one God. That's even how our creed starts. We say we believe in one God, God the Father, the Pantocrator, and we go further to declare our faith regarding the Son and the Holy Spirit. In fact, the idea that God is one is very, very important and clearly manifested in the Bible that even the first command God said, listen, O Israel, the Lord is one. With the number significance in the Bible, when we refer to the number one, we always say God is one. So when we see number one in the Bible, it means a reference to God. Even St. John in his epistle, he says that there are three who testify in heaven, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, but these three are one. So what it is then? Do we believe in one God or we believe in three? Actually, we believe in both. We believe in one God, but that God consists of three persons. I want you today to learn two very important words. One word is called essence, and the other word is called hypostasis, or person. Essence means nature. Hypostasis means individual. But hypostasis is unlike any other regular word. It's a unique word. It's an Aramic word and also has some roots in Greek. The word hypostasis is, is a very unique word. It means a being, a person, a existence. Yet that particular being cannot exist without other persons. For his existence, he needs those others. But he shares with them everything. Except one unique, tiny, uh, distinguished uh, feature. So if I tell you now, do, believe, do we believe in one God? Yes, we do believe in one God. But that God is, just using figurative speech, is made up of three Hypostasis. Each one need the others. Each one require the others. Each one is equal 
with the others. But equal in what? Equal in essence. What is the essence then? Here I want you to imagine with me that we have a golden triangle. A triangle. The triangle is made up of three corners. For today, I will call it A, B, C. The triangle could be made of gold. The triangle could weigh five kilos. The triangle could be 300 meter cube. All of these are equal to A, B, and C. Yet A is called A, B is called B, and C is called A, C. Each one is different in one thing. But if I look at A, it's a corner in a golden triangle. How about God the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit? You know what? <coughs> Just to uh, plan your mind a little bit, I'm going to tell you a story, and then we're going to talk a little deeper. <coughs> One day, do you guys like story? Okay, listen to this story. One day, there was a little girl whose name was Krista. Okay? Krista went to the school, but for some reason, her dad had to travel and relocate to an Arabic country, and there they don't believe in Christ. As soon as Krista entered the school, the teachers told her, eh, Krista, you don't know anything about math. And Krista looked at them and said, how come? I know math very well. I get A and A plus in math. So the teacher looked at Krista and told her, you don't know how to count. Can you make the sign of the cross? And Krista said, eh, yes. yes. So she said, in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. So the teacher said, you made two mistakes. Firstly, you said, in the name. There is no, you missed the S. Then you said, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. So this is the first mistake. And then you said, one God, not three gods. So Krista looked at the teacher and she said, but this is how my church taught me. My dad, my mom, my Sunday school teacher, even the priest in the church. I know he knows mass very well. So Krista was really confused on that day. Do we say in the name or the names? Name. Should we put S? No. no. But can we say in the name of the Father, one God, a man? No. We have to say in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Can we say three God, a man? No. Oh my goodness. How are we going to resolve that? Then Krista spent the day at the school and she was sitting. The teacher told her, Krista, I want you to help me today. Can you open the curtain so that the sunlight enters the room? And Krista ran to the window and opened in the curtain. Then they were going out for recess and the teacher told everybody, guys, remember to put on sunscreen because we don't want the heat to burn. And Krista put sunscreen. As soon as they went out, they were playing, and Krista was looking up high, and the teacher said, Krista, don't look at the sun, because the sun can be hurt your eyes. Then Krista entered the classroom and looked at the teacher and said, Teacher, do we have three sons or only one? And the teacher said, we have a one son. So Krista told her, then how come you talk about the light of the sun, the heat of the sun, and the physical presence of the sun? Is the physical presence of the sun the same as the heat? Is the heat the same as the light? Is the light the same as? And the teacher said, eh, no, they are all one sun, but made of with physical presence, 
light and a and heat. Do we believe in three suns? It's one sun. That's exactly, my beloved, how we believe in the Trinity. The Trinity is three in one and one in three. But they all share the same thing. You know what? I want you today to focus and distinguish between something called the essence and something called the hypostasis. Essence means the nature. Essence, God uh, is sovereign of the universe, which means he exists supremely above all. That's the essence of God. God is a spirit. God is simple. God is holy. He fills all. He is everlasting, timeless. God is love. God, everything that pertains to God's feature as essence, it's equal to the three. Yet, we have to make distinction between each of them. So, when I move to the hypostasis now, I have to say that the Father must have one function and one feature. The Son must have one function and one feature. The Holy Spirit must have one function and one feature. The feature is only unique to the Father. What about the function? The function is his responsibility in the Trinity. Yet he shares that with the two. What about the Son? It's the same. The Son has a feature that is so unique for him. Yet his function is his contribution to the Trinity. And the Holy Spirit is the same. If today we go home just knowing what is essence and what is hypostasis, I'll be glad. So how about we know the feature and the function of each? The father has the feature of fatherhood. He is the fatherhood. That's why he is the fountainhead. He is the presence. His function is the existence. The son has the feature of sonship. And his function is the logic, the revelation, the declaration. The thinking, God is so wise, that's the responsibility of the Son. And the Holy Spirit has the function of proceeding, or the feature of proceeding, but the function of, the, of living. He is the source of the living in the Trinity. I know that, my beloved, we don't uh, digest easily the theological talks, but trust me, we need that. The idea of Trinity and unity is the second fundamental Christian uh, dogma. We have to understand it clearly. But because we are not just coming here for a lecture, I want to go home with a spiritual lesson. There is something called Trinitarian relationality, which means how do we interact with one another? How do we behave with one another? Sometimes we would love to uh, completely wipe out the identity of those whom we deal with. Sometimes I don't accept anybody to differ from me a tiny bit. Sometimes, whether at work or school or at uh, home, a husband and wife, we would love that they live in unity, but the definition of unity, because it's so distorted, it only means in somebody's mind singularity. No, we want to live in unity based on the Trinity. Tr Trinity unity, my beloved, is acceptance of differences. I hope and I pray that one day every single couple would appreciate being different. And I hope and pray that every single family, husband and wife, can embrace differences. I hope and I pray that every single church, two priests, can really live in harmony like the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, respecting differences. The Trinity, my beloved, presents to us through the harmony of the interaction how beautiful it is to be different yet at the same time united. May the Holy Trinity 
can fill our hearts with acceptance to one another in love and in respect so that we can be truly the image of God who said at the beginning, let us make man on our own image. And glory be to God forever and ever. Amen. Yeah.